Hey guys, today I am going to be talking about my dance experience at the Nutmeg Conservatory for the Arts. Bless you! The Nutmeg Conservatory for the Arts is a year-round dance school located in Torrington, Connecticut. They have a year-round program as well as several summer dance programs. They have a pre-professional program in June. They have a professional program in July and they have an apprentice program in August. And the one that I went to was the August apprentice program when I was 20. I am going to be talking about everything that I can remember. I have three pages of notes that are hearing just to make sure that I talk about everything that I want to talk about and that I don't leave anything out. So this is going to be a really long video, possibly in two parts. I will see. So how I found out about the audition. I don't really remember exactly how I found out. I know I saw it on the internet that the Nutmeg Conservatory was coming to Portland Ballet to hold auditions, which was not my school, but it was a school that was nearby. And I think it was around January 2nd or 3rd that I found out because the audition was literally a couple days away. It was on the Saturday, January 5th. And very last minute, I decided that, hey, I'm gonna take a shot at going to this audition and seeing what happens. So I only had a couple days to fill out the application, get my head shot, get my arabesque shot, and then it was audition time. The auditions were held in a class format, and basically what that means is it's run like a class, so you're not individually being auditioned. So it starts with a bar warm up, then some exercises in the center of the room, and then some exercises going across the room. And the audition was taught by Tim Milady, who was one of the teachers there, and he was definitely one of my favorite teachers there. He was pretty laid back, but also very informative. And he wasn't necessarily looking for the best dancers. He was looking for dancers that were able to adjust to a different way of teaching because there are several different ways that ballet can be taught and Nutmeg had a very different format than what I was used to so there were some little things that I had to learn a little bit differently and he was looking for those that would take criticism and apply it to their dancing and that's exactly what I did. I felt like the audition went pretty well. Um, we were told to expect results in about four to six weeks so I really wasn't expecting anything until around March and literally 10 days later I got an email saying that I had been accepted so it was a lot earlier than expected. I obviously didn't expect it and I thought about it for a while and I was like you know what I am going to take this opportunity I have the money to pay for it this is what I want to do I'm gonna go so I think the total was around three thousand dollars for two weeks it was a two-week program and I did some kind of payment plan I can't really remember the details of that but I had enough money to pay for it. So July 28th was the day that I would be driving down there. And it was the longest wait of my entire life. Every day felt like a week waiting for this day to come. And it was a four hour drive from where I lived all the way to Torrington, Connecticut. My grandfather drove me and my mom came along too. And for the most part, it was pretty boring. Driving through Hartford, Connecticut was terrifying, but we made it. When I finally saw the building, 
it was even more breathtaking in person. I saw pictures of the building and it looks absolutely beautiful, but until you see it in person, and especially at nighttime, it is a beautiful, beautiful building. So basically, when I got there, we, I checked in and they gave me a room key card. It's basically a card that you scan and you enter a code to get into the building and into the dorms and stuff. And then I had to go to the dance shop that was located in the same building to pick up my uniform. We all had specific uniforms, so there were three different colored leotards that were all the same style. They were cap sleeve. I think those ones are still at my mom's house. I believe I still have them. But there was a navy, black, and a maroon. And initially I had ordered small, but then upon trying them on, they were too small for me, so I had to go up a size. I had to get medium. And we also had two different color skirts. We had a black skirt and a white skirt. And every color combination was worn on different days. So after I got my dance uniform, we were shown my dorm room, which was a relatively large room with three bunk beds, but I only had two other roommates. So we each got our own bunk bed. We all slept on the bottom and just used the top for like storing our stuff when we ran out of room in the dressers to store stuff. My two roommates were close to my age. I was the oldest, I had turned 20, and one of my roommates' names was Leticia. She was 19 and she was from Brazil. And then there was Megan who was 18 and from California. And I think per four or five rooms, there was a bathroom that we shared with like four or five toilet stalls and two showers. My room was literally right across the hall from it, so I could just quickly cross the hallway and get into the bathroom. Other girls had to walk down the hallway to get to the bathroom. After I unpacked and got my bedding on the bed and unpacked some of my stuff, we all went into one of the studios for a big welcome where the teachers introduced themselves and we all introduced ourselves and then we were given a tour of the building to see all the different studios. There were really two, there was the premiere studio which was on the third floor and then studio two was on the second floor which was the same floor as all the dorms. And then downstairs there was another studio across from where the dance shop was. So it really wasn't that big of a building, but it was still beautiful and I was excited to be there. After the tour, it was time for my family to leave and that was quite emotional for me because I had never, ever, ever, ever been away from home ever and I was 20 years old and this is my first experience so it was a bit weird having my mom and my grandfather leave me at this strange place with a bunch of strange people that I had never met but they left and I just kind of stood there for a moment I was like all right I'm I'm alone what now so I just went back up to my room and I just hung out on my computer and Leticia was also hanging out. She was kind of introverted like I was. Megan was out like getting some ice cream or something. She was the social butterfly of our group. In like a couple hours it was time for dinner and they delivered pizza and I was told that they had a gluten-free pizza, which I was super duper excited about. So went downstairs to get my gluten-free pizza. And I remember that there was like, there were like a group of guys that approached me and they're like, hey, you're the girl from Maine, right? And I'm like, yeah, apparently I was the only one from Maine. Hi. Hi. What's up? This boy's trying to talk to you. 
This was like six years ago, okay? Yeah, I know. I'm still teasing you about it. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I was the only person from Maine. I think most of the dancers were local. They were from Connecticut or they were from across the globe, like in my room. Um, after dinner, we had gathered in one of the studios and started to play icebreaker games. I know we played Two Truths and a Lie. Um, I can't remember, we played one more game, but I can't remember what it was. But after we played icebreaker games, we all just dispersed and went to our rooms and prepared for the real first day. 